hips flow. This will be great if you sit at your desk all day or if you just have naturally tight hips like I do. We'll be starting off with some dynamic movements just to warm up through the hips and then we'll work our way into some more um, stretching poses just to really get deep in both the inner and outer hips. Um, but yeah, let's get started. So just coming into a comfortable seat, just close down your eyes. And you're just letting your hands fall in your lap or on your knee. Really ground down through your sit bones and lengthen up through your spine. And just starting today's practice with one really deep inhale through the nose. And open the mouth and sigh it out. And then just gently blink your eyes open. We're going to start here today in our wide leg child's pose. It's always my favorite pose to start in and it's especially relevant for a hip opening sequence. So toes are together, knees are wide. Your hips are sinking back on your heels. You're just going to walk your hands out in front of you, bringing your forehead down to the ground. And just taking a couple of breaths here, really focusing on those hips sinking back down and into the heels. Imagine your armpits are melting down into the ground beneath you. And then on your next inhale, just making your way into tabletop pose with your hands stacked under your shoulders your knees stacked under your hips. We're just gonna take some gentle cat cows here. So inhale, arching the spine, taking the gaze up. And then exhale, round the spine, pushing the ground away. Inhale, arch the spine, looking up. And then exhale, round the spine, pushing the ground away. One more. Inhale, arch the spine, looking up. And then exhale, round the spine, pushing the ground away. Inhale, coming back through centre. Then we're just going to take some hip circles here. So you can start small and then maybe you'll take your hips all the way back to your heels. Just warming up through the hip joints here. Next time you come back through centre, just taking it in the other direction here. So once again, just starting small. Then as you feel a little bit warmer, you'll take those circles bigger, maybe bring the hips all the way back over the heels. One more here. And then coming back to your tabletop, Really ground down through your palms, pointer fingers facing forward. Tuck the toes under. Inhale, lift the knees. And then exhale, lifting the hips up and back, downward facing dog. Now, we're not going to be here too long. But I just want you to take a moment to find stillness in your down dog here. Maybe shaking the head, yes and no. You can walk the dog out if that feels good, bending through one knee and then the other. And then when you're ready, I want you to inhale that right leg up and back. And on the exhale, bend through the knee, drawing the heel towards the glute. Squaring your shoulders here, so you don't wanna roll that right shoulder open, you wanna keep those shoulders even. And then I just want you to take hip circles again here with a bent knee. One more. And then bring that right foot down to the ground. Inhale that left leg up and back. And then bending through that left knee, bring the heel towards the glute, really squaring the shoulders, pushing down evenly through both palms. And then circling that knee again. One more. And then bring that left foot down, back to your down dog. And then I just want you to step that right foot between the hands, lower the back knee down, untuck the back toes, and then make your way into your low lunge here. So, 
that front knee stacked over the front ankle. You're feeling length right up from the left knee through the left hip flexor, right up through the whole left side of the body here. So we're opening up through the front of the hips. And your arms are high, shoulders away from the ears. Now we want to make sure we're not pushing forward so that front knee is pushing in front of the front ankle. You really want that knee to stay stacked on top of the ankle and then really tucking the pelvis under to lengthen through that left hip flexor. And bring the right hand down to the hip or if your arms are long enough, you can take that right hand all the way down to the ground beside your right hip. And then just reaching up and over to the right with that left hand. Maybe taking your gaze up under that left hand. And then lowering both hands down, bring your right hand inside that right foot and heel toeing that right foot across to the outer edge of your mat. So we're in lizard pose here and you can stay up on your hands. Maybe try rocking onto the outer edge of that right foot and then planting the sole of the foot down. It's a nice way just to ease in to the stretch. And then when you feel warm, you may try bringing your elbows down to the ground or a block if you have one within reach, but don't feel pressured to come down here onto your elbows. Lizard is quite a deep stretch and you might find that just staying here up on your hands is a nice place to be. Expanding your heart and chest forward. One more breath here. And then I want you to really ground down through that left hand, or you can stay on your elbow if you're already down on your elbow. I want you to reach that right arm up and back and then take a hold of the outside edge of that back foot, so the pinky toe side. We're in twisted monkey here. This is quite a deep quad stretch as well as a hip opener. And often I find people who haven't done this before might feel a bit crampy. So feel free to release that back foot if that's you. We're trying to twist the left lung up to the sky. So really twisting. And then we're pulling that heel towards the glute. One more breath here. And then releasing that left foot down nice and gently. Bring that right arm back inside that right foot. Inhale, tuck the toes under of the back foot, lift the back knee. And then we're just going to bring that shin down for our pigeon pose here. So the right knee's behind the right wrist, the left ankle behind the left wrist. I like to tuck my toes under and shift my back knee back a little bit. And then you can stay here for as long as you need, or you can eventually make your way down onto your elbows or bring your forehead down to the ground for sleeping pigeon. Now I had a lot of questions about shin placement in uh, pigeon. So there are a lot of times when you're told to put your shin parallel at the top of the mat. I've been doing yoga for over 10 years now and that has never happened for me. So just know that your body is different um, and this might be your pigeon here with a nice 45 degree angle. And as you feel that right glute start to sink down, maybe making your way down onto your elbows. And if you have a lot of space under that right hip, I invite you to bring a block or a pillow just to fill that void, providing your hip with some support. And then maybe walking your hands all the way out, coming into full sleeping pigeon, bringing your forehead down onto the ground. Just 
just a few more breaths here. And gently walking your hands back in underneath your shoulders, planting your palms down. Tuck the left toes under, lift that left knee off the ground, and then just step straight back into your downward facing dog here. Just maybe walk your dog. Just shake that right leg out a little bit. And then we're just gonna step that left foot between the hands, lowering that back knee down, and then coming up into our low lunge on the other side. So same things here, that front knee stacked over the front ankle. It's a slight tuck of the pelvis to lengthen up through that entire front right side of the body. Arms are high, shoulders away from the ears. And just notice if you're shifting that front knee too far forward and just think about drawing it back so you can find length in the body. Bring that left hand down either to your hip or to the ground if you can reach or if you have a block. And then just reach that right arm up and over to the left side here. Really feeling that stretch all the way up through the right hip flexor, up through the right arm and out through the fingertips. One more breath here. And then lowering the hands down to the inside of the left foot. Heel toe that left foot out to the outer edge of your mat. And then we're in the lizard pose here. So you can stay here up on your palms or if you're super open in the, the inner hips, I invite you to come down onto your elbows. But I'm gonna start here by just rocking onto the outer edge of that left foot and then planting the sole of the foot back down. This is a really nice way to gently ease into lizard. And then you might feel open enough to come down onto your elbows at some stage here. But just know that both sides of your body are different, especially mine. I find that my left hip um, is tighter, even though I use my right hip more because I'm right side dominant. And then you can stay here either on your hands or on your elbows. Or you can take that twisted monkey, grounding down through the right hand, reaching the left arm up and back and taking a hold of the outer edge of that back foot. So once again, if this is new to you, it's quite an intense quad and hip opener. So just know that if you're feeling cramps or just doesn't feel right, you can always just come back to your lizard pose here. Think about expanding the chest towards the sky. One more breath. Releasing that back foot down gently. Bring that left hand back down to the mat. Tuck the toes under of the back foot. Lift the back knee off the ground. And then you just bring that shin down to the mat with the left knee behind the left wrist and the left ankle behind the right wrist. So once again, just Notice that placement of the shin. Don't feel pressured to try and have that shin parallel to the top of the mat. Mine is at maybe a 45 degree angle. And then I like to tuck my back toes under and then shift my back knee back a little bit. You can stay here on your hands for a little bit, maybe releasing down to your elbows. If you have that block, or that pillow, you can really feel this space between your left hip and the ground just to provide a little bit more support. And then maybe if you feel ready, releasing all the way down into full sleeping pigeon, forehead on the ground. We'll be here for a few breaths. And 
walking your hands back in, bring your palm down underneath your shoulders. Tuck the back toes under, lift that back knee up, and then step straight back into your down dog here. And just taking any movement that your body might need to release through the hips, through the calves, maybe walking your dog. And I just want to want you to walk your hands back to the back of your mat. Heel toe your feet as wide as the mat. So your toes are pointing out, your heels are pointing in. And then just sitting down into your malasana squat here, yogi squat. So I'll do this front on for you. Your triceps are coming inside your knees and you're using your triceps and your elbows to push the knees out, hands together at your chest. You're lengthening through the spine, so you don't want to be down here rounded. You really want to be long through the spine, chest and head up. And you might find here that your heels are off the ground. That is totally fine. It's really normal. And if that's the case for you and you're kind of up here, feel free to sit on a block or a cushion, just something to support you from the ground up. I'm just going to be here for a few more breaths. And then bring the hands down to the ground and then just straighten through those legs, bring the toes to point forward, just for a gentle forward fold here, maybe swing side to side. And then when you're ready, just lowering down to a seat. We're gonna take cow face pose here. So Gemma, this one is for you. Uh, we're gonna bring the right knee out in front of us. And then we're gonna stack the left knee on top of the right knee. So you want those knees to be in line and you want the feet on either side of you to be in the same plane. So if you have really open hips, you might find that your feet are kind of out here on either side of your knees. If your hips are a little tighter, you can just tuck them back in alongside of you. We just want to make sure that those knees are as stacked as they can be and the feet on either side of you are in the same, in the same plane. That left hip is really grounding down. So I have my right knee in front, my left knee on top. So I really want to try and ground down through that left hip. It tends to kind of want to lift up. So just really focusing on grounding down. And then if your left hip is on the ground, you can begin to walk forward, folding your body over those knees. And just go as far as you can until it doesn't feel good anymore. You never wanna to go to a place that is painful. A little bit of discomfort is okay. A little bit of discomfort, discomfort can challenge us, but Pain is never, never okay. And gently walking your hands back up. Now, if your left knee is on top, we're gonna twist to the right, twist behind us, and swivel our body all the way around into cow face on the other side. So now the left knee is on the bottom, the right knee is on top. Once again, just play around with the placement of those feet. I often find one side feels a little bit more awkward than the other. And in this side, actually, um, my right hip sits off the ground quite a bit. So I really have to work to try and ground down through that right foot. And then once you're here, just taking a few breaths with a long spine. And then maybe folding over those knees. I'm just going as far as it feels good. And then Gently walking your hands back up. Uncrossing the legs and then rolling down nice and slowly onto your back here. So we're gonna cross 
the right ankle over the left knee for our figure four pose here. And you can stay here if you can already feel this. If you wanna take this a little deeper, you can reach those hands behind the left thigh here. And if you're feeling really open from pigeon or the other hip openness we've done, you can even grab the outside of your shin and then lowering the head and neck back down to the ground. So just finding a variation that works for you. Now I want you to flex through both of your feet and I want you to think about drawing that left knee towards you, but then pushing that left knee away with your right ankle. So you're creating resistance there. And then just gently releasing your hands from your leg. We're gonna plant the left foot down on the ground keeping that right foot hooked over that left knee. We're gonna drop the knees over to the right here. So that right ankle is still stacked on that left knee. This is like a supine twist, but this is more focused on opening up in through the front of the left hip flexor. You can take your hands out to a T here if that feels good. And then coming back through center, planting the sole of the left foot on the ground and releasing the right ankle. Crossing that left ankle over the right thigh. And then once again, choosing your option to stay here, to grab the back of the right thigh or to reach around and grab the front of the shin of the right leg. Flexing through both feet. Think about drawing the right knee towards your face, but then pushing that right knee away with the left ankle. And then releasing the sole of the right foot to the ground, keeping that left ankle hooked over that right knee and then just let the knees fall down to the left here so once again it's like a supine twist that left foot is hooked over the right knee and you can use that ankle to pull the right leg down towards the ground so it should really open up through the right hip flexor and of course you can take your arms out to a T whatever works for you And then planting the sole of the right foot on the ground, releasing the left foot down to the ground. We're gonna bring the knees to our chest, grab the outer edges of our feet, the happy baby here, bending through the knees. Imagine we're drawing the knees down to the ground or down to your armpits here, maybe rocking side to side. You should feel this right up through your inner thighs. Just taking some breaths here. And then drawing your knees back together, giving yourself a bit of a squeeze. And then releasing into Sukta Baddha Konasana here. So knees are wide, soles of the feet are together. One hand to the heart, one hand to the belly. I'm gonna stay here for a few breaths and you can choose to stay here through your Shavasana, or you can straighten your legs out at any time if this becomes too intense. Now take your Shavasana option, either keeping your Knees wide, the soles of your feet together, releasing your hands by your side for Sukta Baddha Konasana, or straightening out your legs and just taking this chance to release. Your practice, your choice here. We'll just be here just for a couple of minutes.
And once we're done, I'll call you out of Shavasana. So no need to rush. to become aware of your breath. Just bring some gentle movement into your fingers and your toes. Maybe circling your wrists and your ankles. If you stayed in Supta Baddha Konasana, then I invite you to use your hands just to gently draw your knees back together. And then we'll all meet on one side, just rolling on to your side, using your arm as a pillow. And then keeping the eyes closed down and just pushing yourself back up into a comfortable seat, just where we started practice. And if you sat in cross-legged, then I just want you to switch legs. The opposite leg is in front. Might feel a little weird. Letting your hands rest in your lap or on your knees. Really lengthen through the spine. Bring your hands together in front of your heart. We'll end today's practice with one really deep inhale through the nose. And open the mouth and side out. I honor the space inside you, in which the entire universe dwells. It is a place of peace and love and truth and happiness. And when you're in that place in you, and I'm in that place in me, we are one. Namaste.